Hey family, welcome to Youth Sunday here at St. John Baptist Church. I'm here with some of the youth that are a part of our youth ministry, and I want you guys to know who they are. So I'm here with Lainey, Mila, and Xavier. And we are so excited because today our youth are taking over the whole service from start to finish. So whether it's the opening or the closing or the in-between, the singing, our youth are taking over the entire service today. That's right. It's a youth takeover here at St. John. But before we get into service, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity to give your name praise, glory, and honor. God, we thank you for another Youth Sunday. God, we thank you that our youth are excited to lift up your name, God. Now, God, we ask that you remove anything that may be a hindrance to your spirit having its way in the service on today. Allow a soul to be saved and a life to be changed because of the worship experience here at St. St. John. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. St. John worship begins now. Well, praise the Lord and good morning, St. John. Come on, praise the Lord and good morning. If you were able to walk in with two good feet, can you come on, stand up on your feet, everybody? We're about to go into the presence of the Lord, and we want to honor him with our song this morning. So before we sing anything, what I want you to do, I want you to loosen up just a little bit, and I want you to hug somebody and speak to somebody, wave at somebody, and tell them welcome to the presence and to the house of the Lord. Come on, you might have to cross the aisle. That's okay. Come on, speak to somebody. Show yourself friends. Can we just lift our hands all over the room and just send up our shout of praise to the Father? Your troubles, 
because the word is true that where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty come on thank him for giving you freedom from oppression suppression and depression thank him for freedom now come on just for another 15 seconds begin to speak to him and he speaks to you come on just let a conversation happen from your heart to his and from his heart to yours come on begin to let the Lord minister to you and you begin to minister to him come on Hallelujah, hallelujah. One more time, we give you all the glory. Let's give our attention to the screen. Hallelujah. Hello, St. John family and friends. Today is Youth Sunday, where we celebrate and acknowledge youth in our church and community. Here are your weekly announcements. First, will all guests who are worshiping with us in person please raise your hand and an usher will bring you a guest information packet. You can fill out the guest information card and leave it in the offering basket shortly in our service. If you are a guest online, please say I'm a guest in the chat section so that we can welcome you. There's a QR code on the screen for all in-person and virtual guests to scan to share your information with us. We look forward to connecting with you. We also invite everyone to share the link to our stream with others so that they can be blessed by our worship service. Calling all K through fifth graders to our Kingdom Kids, our exciting Bible study happening every Tuesday at 7 p.m. You will explore the wonders of the Bible, make new friends, and have lots of fun. Register now at www.sjbc.eventbrite.com to secure your spot. See you there! Youth Church is where learning about Jesus meets fun and excitement. Join us every second and fourth Sunday for ages 13 through 18 for engaging discussions to awesome activities. Every gathering is a chance to go closer to Jesus and to each other. Let's create memories, build friendships, and experience the joy of being part of a vibrant community. Register now at www.sjbc.eventbrite.com. And those are your announcements for today. You can stay connected by following us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribing to us on YouTube. Please check the website at www.sjbc.org for a list of upcoming events and information. We hope that you will enjoy the rest of our worship experience today. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Good morning, St. John. 
It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Is anybody here that's glad to be in the house of the Lord? One more time. It's also great every third Sunday where we can celebrate our young people. Let's give God some praise for our youth, for how they are participating in our worship experience today. We are so excited about what God is doing in the life of our church and in the life of so many of our young people. Um, I'm not sure about private schools or schools outside of Howard County, but one of the things that school systems are doing differently from decades ago when I was in school, they don't mail report cards home anymore. They, they post them online, and so you've got to go find out what your child has done for that quarter. And so if for parents that are here, if you haven't already learned, your child's third quarter report card has already has already come out. And if they haven't shared with you their their results for the third quarter, you might ask them later on today, or we might see during our service. And so, uh, first of all, we want all of our young people, if you've received all A's on your report card this quarter, won't you stand so that we can celebrate with you? We got a young man in the back. We got a sister right here. We got some folks in the children's choir. In fact, why don't all of our young people that got all A's come up on the platform real quick? All of our young scholars that got all A's, you join us here on the platform. Come on my right, come on my left, come on up quickly. All of our, all of our young people that got all A's, we want everybody to see you. Come on, come on so your parents and family can see you. Amen. Amen. All right, look at them coming down here. All right, look at here. Oh, look at here. Oh, shook it, shook it now. All right. All of our young people that got A's and B's join us here on the platform. You got A's and B's. There you go, there you go, A's and B's. Come on up here. We are celebrating you, we are congratulating you, and we are thanking God for you. All right, all of our young people that did their best, this report card, if you did your best, come and join us here on the platform. Here we come. of our young people that did their best. You didn't get all A's and B's, but you did your best. Here we go. You did your best. Now, won't you stand on your feet and give God some praise for our young people, for how they are continuing to excel, for how they're continuing to advance, for how they're continuing to do great things academically in this world. God bless you. God keep you. I love you. You may take your seats. Thank God for our young people. You may take your seats. We're going to ask Aaron Blackman if he would remain. Where's Aaron? Aaron, come up here on the platform. We're asking Aaron to join me here on the platform because we want you to know that earlier this month, Aaron, the son of Deacon Tanika Rucker, won't you stand, Deacon Tanika? That's the proud mother of her son, Aaron. We want you to know that Aaron participated earlier in this week in the Johns Hopkins Mesa program at Cradle Rock Elementary School and Aaron's team won third place for Howard County Elementary School. Out of all the schools, his team came in first. And these were teams tackling this elementary school level 
face a challenge, they had to design, build, and demonstrate a wearable device to help keep babies healthy. And Erin, we are so proud of you for your hard work, and we are so proud of you for the success of your team. He's got his medallion on. This is a proud young man. Joy Matthews, Joy Matthews, Joy Matthews. Where's Joy? Joy is coming. We want Joy Matthews to join me here. She is the proud daughter of Reverend Corey and Dr. Lakeisha Matthews. Won't you stand, proud parents, Reverend Corey and Dr. Lakeisha? We are asking Joy to come, not just because she brings so much joy into our church, but we're asking Joy to come because Joy received the Mathematician of the Week Award. Amen. Joy is in seventh grade at Lake Elkhorn Middle School and she's taking eighth grade and above level mathematics and Joy wants you to know that she is a bad mamma jamma when it comes to math in the public school. Let's give God some praise for Joy and for how she's continuing to excel in her math. And then, many of our older members, particularly when we were at the Wild Lake Interface Center in Old Annapolis, uh, 8910 Old Annapolis Road, you'll remember Dr. Neil Henderson and Joyce Henderson. Well, they moved several years ago to Rushmere, Virginia. And we just learned this week that today at 1 or 2 o'clock, Neil Henderson, he is going to be ordained as a deacon at Union Baptist Church in Rushmere, Virginia. Brother Laniel and his wife Joy, they were faithful members of our church when they lived in this area, and we are blessed to see them continuing to love and serve God in the area where they live now. Let's give God some praise one more time for how God is continuing to bless their lives. Now, we have very special guests worshiping with us, and we would like uh, Sarah Elf, Elfreth. There you go. Sarah, won't you come and stand? We are so excited to have Sarah here. Sarah broke a glass ceiling in 2018, becoming the youngest woman elected to the state senate in Maryland history. Amen. And I want you to know that Sarah isn't about headlines. She's built a reputation as one of the most effective legislators in the state. Over the course of her first five years in office, she passed 84 bills into law on issues that actually impact Maryland families. Bills like protecting the Chesapeake Bay, bills like strengthening the economy, bills like expanding prenatal care, bills like helping veterans with PTSD. Sarah isn't one for slogans. She works to do the right thing. Sarah has been recognized as Legislator of the Year by Maryland Military Coalition, the Park Rangers, the Maryland Affordable Housing Coalition, Preservation Maryland, and the Maryland Library Association. Let's give God some praise as Sarah is running as a Democrat for Congress in the 3rd District. Let's keep Sarah in our prayers and immediately after our worship service, she will be in the Narthex where she'll be able to have conversations with you. God bless you, Sarah, and we thank you for worshiping with us today. 
Last, I want all the members of our Golden Hearts Ministry. This is our seniors ministry. All the members of our Golden Hearts Ministry. Won't you please stand? All the members of our Golden Hearts Ministry. We are so proud of you. As you remain standing, the reason I asked all of our members of the Golden Hearts Ministry to stand is because this Wednesday at 1230, they're going to have a seniors line dancing party here at our church, 1230. That's when lunch is going to begin, 1 o'clock. That's when dancing is going to begin. They have sold out for the line dancing party. I think they had 60-something people already register on Thursday. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. They had 80 people register for their line dance party this coming Wednesday, and they have all sold out. So the next time they have an event, you better register early if you want to participate because events that they sponsor, they sell out quickly. Let's give God some praise for our seniors ministry, our Golden Hearts ministry. We are so excited about how God is using you to bless seniors in our church and seniors in our community. We're going to have a baby dedication now. We've got two families that we are going to celebrate with. And in the interest of time, we're going to be dedicating both babies, both families. And so we want the family of Levi Christopher Sherman to please stand in this section. Where's the family? For Levi Christopher Sherman. Everybody that's participating in that baby dedication, you stand over on this side. Amen. You stand over on this side. And then we've got another baby dedication, Lena Marie Cato. Lena Marie is Lena Marie Cato and her family here. Where's Lena? Marie Kate. Now, there you are. You come right over here. You come right over here. Right on this side. All right. All of the Cato family, you stand on this side. So, church, this is the Hatfields. And this is the McCoys, and we're going to have these families talking to each other so they can get through their strife and that's been for generations and generations. We're so grateful to God. We're so grateful, God, that you've decided to have this baby dedication today because the fact that you're here, the fact that you've asked to have a baby dedication means that both families have recognized that when God gives you something, the first thing you ought to do is to say thank you. And so we've come to express our gratitude today for what God has given to each and every family that's represented here right now. But that's not the only reason we have a baby dedication. The other reason that we have you as families here, including your baby, is because if a baby dedication is going to be complete, the baby is not the only one that needs to be dedicated. Because if this ceremony is going to be a complete baby dedication, you as parents, you as extended family members, you need to decide to dedicate yourselves so that God might use you to be a blessing to your children. And so we've come to say thank you. And we've come to ask God to bless you individually and collectively so that as your, your babies grow, they might grow in their love for God and choose at the appropriate age to live for God. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, we praise you for being such a loving God, a God that loves us so much that you not only say you love us, but you show your love for us each and every day of our lives. We thank you for the gift of life. 
and we thank you for the babies that you've given to each family represented here today. We ask that you might bless these babies, bless them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. We ask that you might fill these families with your love. Fill these families with your wisdom. Fill these families with purpose so that as they live and love and lead these babies, they might teach them about your word and they might teach them about your love so that as the child grows, they might choose to live for you as well. And so we thank you in advance for how you're going to use these babies to be blessings in this world. We thank you in advance for how you're going to fill them up and use them up to your glory. Bless them individually and bless them collectively is our prayer. Let all the people of the Lord say amen. Now, we're going to have deacons to come and you're going to give family special gifts. Good morning, good morning. On behalf of Reverend Turner, the deacon ministry and the members here at St. John Baptist Church, we would like to present each family with a certificate memorializing your baby's um, dedication today. In addition to the certificate, we also have a Bible so that you can continue reading and teaching your baby about the Word of God. And also we have a white carnation symbolizing the purity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As you go forward, we pray that the Lord continues to bless each of your families and you continue to grow in the Word of God. Amen. Now, I will say, families, I will say, families, that if you had dedicated your babies next Sunday, you would have been able to get free tickets to the Columbia Jazz Festival at the Meriwether Post Pavilion. But that was only if you dedicated your baby next Sunday. So we just pray that next time you want to have a dedication, you might check with the secretary to find out if there's a special Sunday where you can experience and receive some special blessings. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is my proud pleasure to introduce to some and to present to others two blessed babies, Lena Marie Cato and Levi Christopher Sherman. Let's give God some praise for these blessed babies in the house. You can go back to your seats. Amen, amen. Can we give God praise one more time for two babies being dedicated back to God? All right, so it's our Youth Sunday. It's third Sunday, so that means our children's choir is going to perform here this morning. So as they are coming up, can we just stand to our feet? Can we clap our hands? I need you to make some loud noise so that we can cheer on our children's choir. Come on, they are singing unto the Lord this morning, and we want them to know that we are here rooting them on and cheering them on and pushing them as they are lifting their voices unto God this morning. Amen. All right, so one more time, let's put our hands together for our children's choir.
Amen. Come on, as they go to their seats, come on, let's stand to their feet. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give God some praise for how they ushered us into the presence of God this morning. Come on, and a child shall lead them. Come on, these are our babies who are lifting up the name of God. Amen, amen, amen. That we came to give God some praise this morning. It's Youth Sunday, and our children are setting the example of what worship looks like this morning. And so I don't know about you, but I'm not going to let these babies praise God all by themselves. But I'm going to stand to my feet. I'm going to lift up my hands. I'm going to open up my mouth. I'm going to give God all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor that he deserves this morning. Amen. Come on, look to your neighbor and tell them, I am proof that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Oh, come on, that neighbor didn't react right. And if you sit next to the wrong neighbor, I need you to turn to the other neighbor and say, neighbor, I am proof that weeping may endure for a night, but joy, 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 comes in the morning. So good morning, St. John. And I came to let you know that your joy is here because the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, he is here this morning. So whatever you need is in the room this morning. If you need joy, reach up and grab it. If you need peace, reach up and grab it. If you need healing, reach up and grab it. I got it if you need a financial breakthrough, reach up and grab it. I yell out an emotion kit. Oh my gosh. I feel my help this morning. Because when I look to the hills from which cometh my help, all of my help, it comes from the Lord. And for that, I have a reason and a responsibility to give the God that I serve a great big praise. I'm sorry, but I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. Because the God that I serve has been too good to me for me to sit here like a bump on a log. But I'm going to give him some praise. I'm going to give him some glory. Because I'm a living testimony that the devil is a liar, God is exalted, and we have the victory. I said the devil is a liar, God is exalted, and we have the victory. And if you believe you got the victory too, I need you to put your hands on it. Put your feet on it.
moment. Don't miss your breakthrough. Don't miss your deliverance. Whatever you need is already here. It's yours for the test. He is a great God. He is greatly to be praised. We love you, God. We adore you, God. We worship you, God. We thank you because of who you are. And we know that you are able, God, to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask, think, or imagine. See, the children, they were speaking prophetically over this house this morning. He was, they were telling you that he is able to do what you need him to do because of who he is. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's Jehovah Nisi. Whatever you need him to be, he is the great I am. So whatever you stand in the need of, thine hand shall provide. Great is thy faithfulness. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Oh God, I thank you. Oh God, I thank you. some praise one more time for how he has truly trolled his presence in here this morning and as we go further into worship this morning it is time to give this morning and on yesterday my wife and I our daughter gets up very early every day and when she's up she's up Right, she likes to play, she likes to talk, she wants to watch her shows. And so as we were up, we decided to put on the movie Kung Fu Panda. And as we were watching the movie, it just reminded me of my childhood, of how I would take Taekwondo lessons for seven years. And my parents purposefully put me in that to teach me discipline, 
to teach me respect, how to follow process, and what it's like to be patient. So there were a lot of values that came out of me being a part of Taekwondo. And yes, I did it when I was younger for seven years straight. But to this day, I still remember every move that was taught to me as a young boy. And that reminded me of the scripture in Proverbs where it says, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are older, they shall not depart from it. Amen. And that's what we are doing here at St. John. You see the manifestation of it already with how they are worshiping and praising God in our choir. But we have youth church on a consistent basis. We have Bible study for our children. In the coming months, we're launching Youth Sunday School in May. We're launching our teen Bible study in May. And we also have an amazing summer camp coming in the month of June that will last till the end of the summer. And we are expecting over 100 children to be a part of our summer camp. Amen? Right, so that is no small task. And, but it requires an investment into our youth. We have already been investing and we want to continue to invest in our youth, amen? And so we thank you for those who have already given to our youth enhancement fund, right? And so as we are giving, we ask today for those of you to give to our youth enhancement fund. The ways to give are on the screen. And if I can get as many people as we can this morning to give $25 above your tithes and your offering, your tithes are your 10% of all your earnings. Your offering is that which you want to give above that. But this morning, I want you to give a special offering as well to our Youth Enhancement Fund. So as many people as we can, I want you to give $25 this morning to our Youth Enhancement Fund. And again, the ways to give are on the screen. So if all hearts and minds are on one accord, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for manifesting your presence and coming to see about us this morning. And God, for that, we thank you. Now, God, we ask that you bless every seed that will be sown today. We ask that you bless every seed sower who is sowing this morning. Bless the seed, allow it to reap a harvest that will be so big that we can bless all of the youth in our church and in our community around us. Now bless every seed sower and their lives never be the same because of their obedience and their sacrifice this morning to give that which has been given unto them, God. Now God, we ask that you just continue to bless all of our students as they continue to live out this faith walk and as they desire to grow into you. Let the seed today help with that harvest so that they can be all that you have called them to be, God. And it's in your name we pray, amen. And we ask that you all stand. We are a walking church, so we will walk to give our offerings on this morning. And if you received a gift pack, a guest packet this morning, when you walk, please make sure you drop that guest packet in the offering plate, uh, in the offering box, uh, so that we can receive your guest packet. You are now on the direction of the ushers. God bless you. Come on, and as we give cheerfully, can we just put our hands together? Come on, can we put our hands together right here?
have the, the word is coming. We have an amazing word this morning. But before we get to that, I want us to send up one more song to the Lord. And this song simply talks about our hearts being open and ready to receive a blessing from the Lord. Is there anybody that came here today not just to look good, but to also receive something from God? If that's you, can you just wave your hand? Hallelujah. Take it out right here. We're gonna say, break me. 
accessible. We're celebrating that he is sovereign. We're celebrating that he is wise. We're celebrating that he is gracious. We're celebrating because he's a provider. We're celebrating because he's got grace. We're celebrating because he's got mercy. We're celebrating because he is God all by himself and he doesn't need anybody else. And so when we lift our hands we're lifting them up in celebration but then not only are we lifting them up in celebration we're also lifting them up in surrender whenever the police come and they say stop we're lifting up our hands because we're taking off our Burger King crown and we're recognizing that there's only one being that deserves the crown and he is King of Kings and he's Lord of Lords and because he's in charge we ought to let him be in control because he's in charge we ought to surrender our will to his will is there anybody here who knows that your Heavenly Father knows best and because he knows best you want to surrender your thoughts to his thoughts and because he knows best you want to surrender your plans to his plans because he knows best you want to surrender your ways to he his ways is there anybody here who came to surrender today because we serve a mighty good God we lift up our hands in celebration we lift up our hands in total surrender because when God is in your life he is always in control let's give God some praise for being so active in our lives if you have your Bibles we invite you to turn now to the New Testament book of Matthew Matthew chapter 21, New Testament book of Matthew, 21st chapter. We're going to be reading verses 18 through 22. Matthew 18, Matthew 21, verses 18 through 22. I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. However, follow along in whatever translation that you have. If you're able, won't you stand in honor of the author of the Word of God? Hear these words from the Word of God. Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry, seeing a fig tree by the road. He went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. 
Then he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately, the tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly, they asked. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. If you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Church, I'm about to just call for the benediction because that word done preached for itself. I'm about to go to my seat because because that word has already preached itself. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, if you will, we ask that you might let the very words of my mouth and the very meditations of all of our hearts to be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Let all the people of the Lord say amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Verse 21. Verse 21 says, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. If you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and it will be done. Church, for a few moments today, we just want to hang these words on the hinges of your mind. God can give you mountain-moving faith. God can give you mountain-moving faith. Church, our text for today talks about an unusual miracle which actually takes place at a very unusual moment in the life of our master named Jesus the Christ. And what makes this particular miracle unlike any other miracle in the Bible so unusual is that it's the only miracle where Jesus is bringing about a curse on something instead of bringing about a blessing on something. In other words, church, out of the 33 recorded miracles by Jesus in God's word, this is the only miracle that's not a demonstration of his mercy, but instead it's a pronouncement of his judgment on this tree. And then, church, this miracle that's so unusual takes place at a very unusual moment in the life of our Lord. Because this miracle happens at a time when Jesus is focused and frustrated at the very same time. Because he's focused on the cross. And he's focused on his assignment. And he's focused on his sacrifice. And he's focused on the work that he was sent to this world to do. And he's focused on his blood that soon will be shed to wash away all the sins of sinners in this world. And so Jesus, he's focused on the cross that's coming down the road. Because this was the last week before Jesus would go go to Calvary. But church, at the same time, while he's focused on the cross, he's also frustrated with the condition surrounding him as well. In fact, church, when you, look, when you look at verses 18 through 22, Jesus is frustrated with at least a few things in our text because he's frustrated, first of all, with a flawed temple. Jesus is frustrated with a flawed temple because the text says in verse 18 that Jesus is making his way to the city. 
And verse 17 says that the last time Jesus was there, Jesus got fed up. And being fed up, he turned on his heels and he left the city of Jerusalem and he left for Bethany where he decided to spend the night. And so the last time that Jesus was in the city of Jerusalem, the Bible said that Jesus got fed up because there were some things that he didn't see in the temple and that he didn't see in the sanctuary that frustrated our Lord because the first of all church the first thing that he decided that wasn't there when he looked in the sanctuary Jesus was frustrated because there was no one regarding the poor and there was no one relying on prayer and there was no one releasing some praise Jesus was frustrated because when he went into the sanctuary, there was no one regarding the poor, there was no one relying on prayer, and there was no one releasing some praise. And so Jesus was fed up because he thought that in the church, someone would have been there that was helping the poor. And Jesus has thought that when you come into the house of God, somebody would have been there that was having some prayer. And when Jesus came into the temple, Jesus thought that when you come into the house of God, that there would be somebody there that would be lifting up some praise. But because there was no prayer going on and there was no praise going on and there was nobody there that was helping the poor, the text says that Jesus got so fed up that he turned on his heels and he walked out of the city of Jerusalem and church it's a sad state of affairs whenever Jesus gets so frustrated that he decides to leave a location or to leave a particular situation because when Jesus leaves all his miracles leave with him and when Jesus leaves, all of his anointing leaves with him. And when Jesus leaves, all of his peace leaves with him. And when Jesus leaves, all of his power leaves with him. And when Jesus leaves, all of his joy leaves with him. And that's why every now and then, you ought to say like the songwriter said, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Why? While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. And so is there anybody here who came to give God some praise? Because the God we serve is always present with you. And so Jesus, he was frustrated. Jesus, he was frustrated about the flaws in the temple. But not only was Jesus frustrated because of the flawed temple, the Bible also says in verse 19 that he was also frustrated because there was a fruitless tree. Jesus was frustrated because there was a fruitless tree. Because verse 19 says that, that Jesus sees this fig tree along the side of the road. And as Jesus approached this tree, he was expecting or anticipating a breakfast of figs. But verse 19 says that when Jesus gets to the tree, there's nothing on the tree but fig leaves. There's nothing on the tree but foliage. And so the fruitlessness of this tree was adding to the frustration of the day because the tree was really misrepresenting itself. And church, whether you know it or not, one thing that the Lord can't stand is a hypocritical tree. One thing that the Lord can't stand is a hypocritical tree. And one thing that the Lord can't stand is a tree that claims to be one thing on Sunday and another thing on Monday. One thing that the Lord can't stand 
is for a tree to worship on Sunday and act like you don't know the Lord on Monday. One thing that the Lord can't stand is for somebody to come into the house of God and you lift up your hands in the prayer room, but then you don't acknowledge him in the boardroom. One thing that the Lord can't stand is a tree that acts one way in church, but another way in your house, and another way in the club, and another way in the mall, and another way on Friday night. But is there anybody here who can testify that God's not concerned with how high you jump when you shout, but God is concerned with how straight you walk when you come back down? Because the Lord can't stand a tree that looks like a fig tree and has leaves like a fig tree, but when you approach it to benefit from it, it has nothing but leaves. Has nothing but leaves. And so, and so Jesus is frustrated. He's frustrated because of the flaws in the temple. Jesus is frustrated because of the fruitlessness of this tree. But then the zenith of his frustration is when he realizes that he has a faithless team of disciples. He's frustrated because he's got a faithless team of disciples because the text says that these disciples are so impressed because they can't figure out how Jesus can speak a word over the tree and the tree can be leafy in one moment and dry as a stick the next. And so these disciples, they're impressed with how the Lord could speak a word and that word which was given it could pre speak life one moment and suddenly that same word can dry something up in the next but church Jesus takes this unusual miracle which takes place at an unusual moment and he decides to teach his disciples an unusual lesson because he teaches them a lesson on how not to settle for things to remain in your life that are really outside of the will of God. In other words, church, Jesus is showing these disciples through the cursing of this fig tree uh, that there are things uh, which he did not ordain uh, to be permanent in your life uh, and it's those things uh, that we should have the power and the right uh, to speak a word over them uh, and to move whatever it is uh, out of your life. Uh, and so the lesson that this text is teaching us church uh, is that we don't have to settle for just anything to remain in our lives because church anything that God has not ordained to be a permanent fixture in your life you need to know today that you have what the text describes as mountain moving power you have mountain moving power because Jesus looks at his disciples in the face and he says that what you just saw was absolutely nothing but you need to know that contained within the life of every believer is a force to move some stuff that's not meant to be permanent in your life is there anybody here who came to give God some praise because if you've got a mountain that's in your way that mountain didn't come to stay in your life that the mountain that came it came to pass somebody ought to give God some praise today because your mountain never has the last word over you and so, and so Jesus, he wants, he wants his disciples to know that this kind of force can only come through the vehicle called faith. This kind of power can only come through the vehicle 
vehicle called faith. Because this lesson is about not letting and not settling for things that may already be there in your life. But just because they are there doesn't mean that they have to stay there. And the reason I'm bringing this up this morning is because there's somebody here under the sound of my voice and you're carrying some unnecessary stress that doesn't need to be there. And you're carrying some unnecessary burdens that don't need to be there. And you're carrying some unnecessary worry that doesn't need to be there. And you're walking some unnecessary flaws that don't need to be there. Because if you're facing some mountains that are in your house, and if you're facing some mountains that are in your relationship, and if you're facing some mountains that are on your job, and if you're facing some mountains that are messing with your health, and if you're facing some mountains that are working at your school, the word from the Lord is to you this morning that while those mountains may be there right now, those mountains that may come, they don't have to stay where they are because whatever mountain you had in your life before you leave church today, by the time you get home, you're going to have a reason to give God some praise because God is getting ready to move some mountains out of your way. So is there anybody here who came to give God some praise because God's got the power to move cancer out of your way and God's got the power to move haters out of your way and God's got the power to move sadness out of your way and God's got the power to move grief out of your way. Is there anybody here who can testify that my God is able to move storms out of my way and God is able to move drama out of my way? Somebody ought to give God some praise today because God is able to move mountains out of your way. God is able. Now, now when you look, when you look, when you look at this text, Jesus, he turns to his disciples and Jesus suggests to them and to us that if you want to maintain it and have mountain moving faith, what you need to do is you need to have an expansion of your faith. At an 8 o'clock service, I shared with them that you need to have an extension of faith. But, but for the 10, 15 crowd, I want you to know that if you want to have mountain moving power, you've got to have an expansion of your faith. Now, 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 now watch this, church. Watch, watch this. Because the text says in verse 21 that, that if you embrace this kingdom life and you don't doubt the one true living God. You'll not only do more feats like Jesus did to that tree, but Jesus wants you to know that you'll be able to triumph over huge obstacles in your way. Because Jesus says to these disciples, do you see this mountain as an example? Because if you have the faith, you'll tell this mountain to jump in the lake and the mountain will have to start jumping. Because Jesus was trying to teach his disciples back then that if we're going to move some stuff out of our lives then we've got to get to the point where we are willing to expand our faith. In other words church, we got to believe God for some big stuff in our lives. We got to believe God for some big stuff in our, now, now, now a lot of folk in the church, a lot of folk in the church we don't believe God for big stuff. A lot of folk in the church, we, 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 we act like we serve a small God. We, we, we act like we serve a teeny God. We, we act like we serve a little God. But God sent me here to tell somebody that we serve a mighty big God. And if we serve a big God, we ought to have some big plans. 
not, not in the church, in the text. The disciples were so impressed with how Jesus caused a fig tree to wither. But Jesus looks at the fig tree and he says, that miracle was minor. Jesus says, that miracle, that was small stuff. Because Jesus said, if you thought that was something, don't be impressed with my ability to speak a word to this fig tree and have that fig tree to wither. But Jesus looked beyond the minor and he looks at the mountain. And Jesus says that you need to know that you have the power not just to look at the minor, but you've got the power to speak to the major because you've got the power to look at something major in your life and speak to something major and tell that major to move out of your way and so church if you've had a minor mentality God sent me here to tell somebody that you'll never move anything that's major in your life and so if you want your God to move mountains out of your way God sent me here to tell somebody that your job is to expand your faith which means, church, that you've got to stop putting God in a box. And you've got to stop just expecting God to do what he has done for your family. And you've got to stop just expecting God just to do what you have seen him do before. Because God's got some stuff to show you in this world that literally has the ability to blow your mind. But you won't be able to get it unless you are willing to think big in this world well because we serve a mighty big God and so would you turn to your neighbor real quick and tell your neighbor neighbor stop thinking small and learn how to expand your faith because if you learn how to expand your faith you can have everything that God has put in your spirit and if you expand your faith and dream bigger big dreams and if you expand your faith and think bigger thoughts and if you expand your faith and enlarge your hopes and if you expand your faith and engage in bigger projects you can have more than whatever you have right now because God can give you something that can blow your mind but in order for you to get it you've got to be willing to think big now now I can hear I can hear somebody saying I can hear somebody saying but pastor you, you don't know what I'm up against in my life Pastor, I, I want to think big, but, but you don't know how bad my history has been. Pastor, I want to think big, but, but you don't know how jacked up my life has been so far. And Pastor, I want to think big, but, but you don't know how many times I've tried and I failed in my trying. And church, my response to you is that you are absolutely, positively correct because I don't know how many times you've fallen in your past and I don't know how bad your situation may be in your life but I do know that there was a brother in the Bible named Jabez and the Bible says that Jabez was an honorable man and while he had a painful past he also had a powerful prayer life and in spite of what he had to go through in the past the Bible says that he got down on his knees and he called home the name of the Lord and he said Lord I need you to bless me Lord I need you to help me Lord I need you to enlarge my territory Lord I need you to move some mountains out of my way and the Bible says that the Lord laid his hands on Jabez and the Lord gave him everything that he desired for his life and so if you have a desire for the more that God can provide and if you have a desire for God to move mountains out of your way then God can give you more than you've had 
before because God is able to bless you in the city and God is able to bless you in the field and God is able to bless you when you come and God is able to bless you when you go and God can give you a blessing that can blow your mind but before God will do what only God can do you've got to do more than settle for thinking small because what God wants to do is to expand your faith and when you expand your faith and start thinking big you'll start dreaming big dreams and you'll start planning big plans and you'll start hoping for big hopes and you'll start desiring some big blessings because sometimes what God wants he wants to tell somebody that mountains will never move if they are blocking something in your life if you can't picture God taking you beyond where you are right now. Did you hear what I said? I said God will never move mountains in your life if you can't picture God taking you way beyond where you are right now. So is there anybody here who came to give God some praise because God is able to move a mountain Turns out of your way and God can give you more than you've had before cause he can give you more love and he can give you more joy and he can give you more peace and he can give you more anointing and he can give you more power and he can give you more fulfillment and he can give you more contentment and he can and give you more enjoyment because God is able to move mountains out of your way and God is able to open doors that no man can close and God is able to speak peace to your storm and God is able to make your haters become your elevators and God is able to provide for your needs. Is there anybody here who came to give God some praise? Because God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. Won't it do it? Won't it do it? If you believe it, say yeah. If you know it, say yeah. If you're glad about it, then let's give God the glory. And let's give God the honor. And let's give God the praise. And say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Would you stand with us as we prepare to offer Christ to you? There may be one, there may be some. If you're in this place, even if you're online, and you desire a relationship with Jesus Christ, he who invites us to not live by intelligence or live by human capacity or ability. He invites us to live by faith. I encourage you today to trust God. He, he, he's waiting for you to, to receive what he's trying to give you. He wants to give you new life. He wants to give you opportunity to connect with him at the greatest level. He wants to give you opportunity to have the power of God at work in your life. But it depends on your willingness to accept and receive. I offer Christ a relationship with Jesus Christ. My sister is coming. Come on, y'all clap for her. God bless you. Come on, y'all so dry. I said y'all clap for her. She's giving her life to Jesus Christ. This is not a sweepstakes. This is salvation. God is so good. I offer Christ and I offer church. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you can step out of the aisle. Our, our deacons are prepared to receive you. And if 
You need a church home, a place where you can grow in Christ. You may already be saved. I offer you community today, and I offer Christ. We offer Christ. Come on, if you're coming, you can step out of the aisle and walk down our deacons already. You can make that choice. If you're home, scan that QR code. Do it now. Come on, big. I want to go with him. When he Come on, y'all clap. I've come too far. I'll never turn. Christian experience. And we have Neela Pert, who's coming by Christian experience. <laughs> I love it. I'm sure. Come on, y'all, look at me. Welcome. Thank God for your choice to connect with him and with his church. When you connect with Jesus, he gives you new life. When you connect with church, He'll strengthen the life he's given you. Come on, y'all clap for these three beautiful women of God. Immediately, you can get your things. You can go to the exit door. Our deacons are ready to receive you, all right? Let's posture ourselves for prayer. It's prayer times. Names are coming on the screen of those we're praying for, and we're excited. How many, how many still believe God hears and answers prayer? Come on, wear those hands. If you know he really answers prayer. I'm going to tell y'all what, we are living in such a time where you need a strong relationship with God through prayer. And I want to give all of us a challenge. We're over our time, but I want to challenge all of us to let church be your surge for prayer and don't let it be the only prayer you experience. Don't let church be the only place you experience prayer. You need prayer on your job. If I were you, I would never get in and out of my car without asking God to protect me and thanking him for doing so. 
I'm in and out of airplanes every other week. I don't sit on a flight. Before they, I don't need you to tell me to put my seatbelt on or how to put the mask on first. I need heaven to take the plane up and bring the plane down. Our new member candidates, if you're here, you can go right to this exit door immediately. If you just joined church and gave your life to the Lord, go to this exit door right now, and they're ready to receive you. It's time for prayer. I want you to bring your needs up in your heart, everything, everybody, everything you want the Lord to minister to. Names are coming on the screen that we're continuing to pray for. And also, on this Youth Sunday, we're going to have Brother Nolan Golden going to pray for us. Come on, y'all, let him know. Go ahead. You got it. <laughs> let us pray dear lord thank you for giving us the opportunity to worship you on this beautiful sunday morning we thank you for giving us life and all the wonderful opportunities this life holds thank you for the highs and the lows the struggles and the success and the wins and the losses please assist us in keeping your son's miracles and sacrifices on the forefront of our minds and hearts, knowing that no matter what we think will happen, you always have something a million times better in store and that you have the power to do any and everything. Please help all of us on the prayer list and uplift their souls like only you can do. We ask that you allow us to have today's sermon in our minds throughout the upcoming week, and we thank you for allowing us the time to worship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise for our young people. They've done a great job. Our children's choir, our youth ushers, our worship leader, our youth pastor. We thank all of you and our young adult praise team. They blessed us in a major way. We thank God for all of our guests. We thank you for coming to assist us in lifting up the name of the Lord. In fact, for those worshiping online, if this service has been a blessing to you, won't you go to the chat section and type in one word that lets us know what this service has meant to you. I don't know what your word is, but my word is uplifted. Go to the chat section and type up one word. It lets us know what this service has meant to you. And then we ask that you might keep the Miller family in your prayers. Uh, Deacon Bill Miller, he lost his father, and the homegoing service is tomorrow. And so keep the Miller family, the homegoing service is going to be in New Jersey. And so keep the Miller family in your prayers. After the closing prayer has been given, we ask ushers, could you come down and take uh, our special guest, Sarah, and uh, her guest to the Narthex real quick? Come on down, Joy. Come on down. Fourth row. Come on down. Fourth row from the front. Keep coming. Get ready. Stop. There you go. And just take our special guest. She's going to be in the Narthex, and she'll be there She'll be there to answer any questions and to have conversation with you. We thank you for all that have come. But most importantly, I am so grateful to the Lord that his spirit stopped by this place. Because our service would not have been what it has been if the Holy Spirit was not here with us. Now as we get ready to close, let me leave you with these parting words. Whenever you have a problem, Focus on the solution to the problem and not just the problem itself. Let's look to the Lord to be dismissed. Now, may the love of God, the grace of your son Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now, this day, and forevermore. Let all the people of